We've been exploring a lot around the coping skills that we use in times of stress. That A plus B equals C equation, if this is the first time you're joining us uh, on this channel, then no problem. The videos that really dive deep into that equation are linked in the notes below. And just for a quick overview, A, an activating experience happens, plus B, our behavioral electrochemical response, a cortisol shot, which then results in C, the coping skill, which is the booze or the pot or the food or the sex or the overworking or whatever it might be that you use to manage your system for an easy button fix to pull yourself out of the emotional experience. Now, one of the core parts of this equation is an idea called self-betrayal. When we engage in self-betrayal, we leave ourselves open to great vulnerability as well as engagement in those less than preferable coping skills. So in this video, we're going to spend a little bit of time unpacking self-betrayal. Self-betrayal has two core components. One is self-betrayal of self meaning that somebody is stampeding in on a boundary and we're not stepping up and using our voice and our words to take care of ourselves. Another version of self-betrayal is where we're not treating another human the way that we believe that we should. Both of those experiences result in compounding experiences of guilt and shame. Sometimes they coexist. Sometimes they exist entirely outside of one another. Think about a moment where you just weren't your best self. And then notice, were you letting yourself down in terms of protecting yourself? Were you telling yourself a story about the other person? Did you let yourself down in terms of how you interacted with the person that you care about? Those moments of self-betrayal have stampeding effects. Now, the good news is in moments of self-betrayal, we have tools and techniques, and these moments are prolific and they are human. They are what I love to call opportunities for self-growth and phoenixing up. Because when we use those moments of not being our best selves, it's an opportunity to fly into the flames of, oof, that felt really gross. I can't believe I did that. In order to sponsor healing, then we get to become the version of ourselves that we want to be. In those moments, don't reach for the food. I encourage you to avoid the alcohol, the marijuana, the sex. I encourage you to avoid diving into my, my this is me, writing another chapter in the book, because uh, that's my favorite pastime is just to turn on the laptop and avoid the emotions and instead take a breath. Do some CPR for the amygdala if you notice your brain's kicking up some dust. And write out these words, and this is from Brene Brown's Rising Strong, and they're so powerful. The story I'm telling myself is. And complete that sentence. And you might need to write those words several times. And then bring that story front and center and read it out loud and notice the story you're telling yourself. And check in. Does that belong to the past? Does that belong to your amygdala's fear? Or does it belong to the right now? And regardless, what can you do about it? Rather than numbing out or disconnecting, make a plan, do something different. A pattern repeats a pattern repeats a pattern. So let's create specific intentional change. Self-betrayal is an incredible opportunity for self-growth when we allow it to be. If these videos are helpful for you, and please like them, please share them, subscribe. We have many more coming. It's a joy being a part of your healing journey. I look forward to seeing you soon.